It feels like we've gotten to a point now where we can officially say there are three certainties in life. Death, taxes, and wrestlers being the biggest butt hurt, soft ass crybabies imaginable. Like wrestling fans get a rap, earned, merited, deserved, yes, but also unfair, unmerited, undeserved, about being the biggest whiny, bitchy, pissy, moany crybabies imaginable. To which I would say, yes, they are in that category, but they're not the biggest. And if anything, wrestling fans are only learning from the example that is now set by the marks that are in the business, which is the single, let's be clear, number one biggest problem in professional wrestling today as a whole. It's the marks in the business, not the marks outside of the business. And every time you turn around, you look and see that for every one time that wrestlers are legitimately mad or upset about something valid, uh, that you find five, six, seven other times that they just seem to be rallying around this really stupid cause or just really whining and crying about something incredibly fucking dumb. Like, you know, all the wrestlers that always sit there and get mad. Eh, fans can't criticize me because they don't do that. But they're the same wrestlers that'll bitch about a car rental place or they'll bitch about an airline or a hotel. But when you use the logic on them, well, you don't do that job. You don't know what it's like. So who are you to criticize? They'll be quick with the I'm a bitch block button. You know, those types of things. Typical, typical crap. Um, but it's a pervasiveness. Now, I, to be clear... You know, for those of you that are going to say Undertaker's right, yeah, yeah, you know, in terms of softness of mindset and mentality in wrestling, yeah, he absolutely is. I can't believe anybody would disagree with that. Um, now, if we had social media 30, 40 years ago, I guarantee a lot of those dudes would have been the same fucking way and probably been every bit of big of bitches, if not more so. And you can live in this fantasy land that that's not true because that was a generation where men were real men and previous generations were? Eh. Just manifested in different ways. People have always been whiny, bitchy, emotional babies. That was true 30 years ago. It was true 50 years ago. It was a true 100 years ago, 150 years ago. If you ever hear anybody reference, oh, the Founding Fathers, you want to talk about some of the most overdramatic, uh, whiny, bitchy babies imaginable, look at the Founding Fathers. Like These guys used to take one personal insult and want to call a duel where the ultimate goal of that duel was to shoot the opponent dead because they said something against your name. The epitome of soft-ass behavior. So you see Fox tweets out yesterday... This tier ranking thing. You see other sports do it. Other social media accounts for different websites, different companies do it, different leagues do it. About, you know, put together a team using the one, two, three, four, five dollar tiers. They do it in sports, both men's and women's. Not anything that's a big deal. If anything, that's interesting. It drives high levels of engagement. Hence, why they do these damn things. Because it's a way to foster healthy, natural debate. People like drama. People like swirl. We're, we gravitate towards it. We're negative creatures by habit. That's who we are. It's genetic. It's science. But of course, because now WWE on Fox, you know, Fox's Twitter page tweets this out with the tears and it's involving the female wrestlers of WWE, you already know where this is going to fucking go. You already know. And it shouldn't have to be like this. And you shouldn't have to worry about something like this. That's an absolute nothing burger. But you also have to understand the landscape and climate that we're in today, specifically when it comes to most importantly of all professional wrestling and sure as hell, God, the freaking WWE. And that insecurity and that softness all manifest, you know, or all, excuse me, all kind of trickles down from the top in Vince McMahon. That's why he's such a control freak, because he's so damn insecure. 
So it all starts with him. It does. It absolutely does. And don't try to say that it doesn't because it totally does. But they put out this tweet, Fox did, one through five. You had four ladies in each tier. Seems relatively harmless. Again, usually drives discussion and debate. Kind of a healthy thing. So, of course, you knew that some of the ladies on that list and just some of the wrestlers in general in WWE and throughout we're going to have a problem with this because they're the biggest whiny, pissy, moany, bitching babies imaginable. Like Natalie Neidhart. Let's go to this humdinger. She went and posted some whole little blog post looking thing on her Twitter account that said, and I quote, I have struggled for years to figure out exactly what my worth is, but I won't allow anyone to pick that number for me. As hurtful as seeing this is, I want it to be known that if I ever find myself under all of these wonderful women, it's because I'm a pillar and a foundation of what we're doing. So please keep the one dollar because anyone who knows anything knows how priceless I am, unquote. Oh my God. <laughs> now maybe, maybe. This got crossed up in her moose knuckle somewhere where she didn't understand the basic premise where you see this happen with actors and movies and TV shows and you go on and on and on and all these other sports. Like, not a big thing, not a big deal. So maybe got lost in, in translation across the border, even though I'm pretty sure she's probably living in fucking Florida now, whatever. But she's Canadian. God bless them, you gotta love them. But they got a little too much syrup up here. And they're synapses. I won't allow anybody to pick that number for me. Uh, a ding dong dumb bitch. If you look at it, it's actually pretty generous that it even put your sorry ass on the fucking list. After all those years of being in WWE and you still can't figure it out. Like even here, this is supposed to be a typed up version of a promo? What the hell is this? Like this is the most savage thing you can come up with? This is the response that you probably spent a lot of time on? This is the diarrhea that came from your type holes? Give me a fucking break. Should be thankful they put your irrelevant ass on the damn tier to begin with. But if you look at it, one, two, three, four, five, what they called out, talk about that WWE on Fox Twitter account, was for all intents and purposes a pretty accurate representation and reflection of what the women's division is and who's thought of in certain spots. You're at the bottom tier. And bitch, frankly, you didn't even deserve to be on the damn list. But you got there. So you're talking about, I find myself under all of these wonderful women because I'm a pillar and foundation of what we're doing. No, you're not. If you went away, real talk, Nobody that watches the product would really truly give a shit. Like your, your absence would not be missed. It would not be felt. So instead of taking that and looking at it and taking a step back and really examining and saying, you know what? I don't like that. That's fair. What do I need to do to be viewed better? What do I need to do to change the perception of me? What do I need to do to improve and get better after all those damn years of coasting by on my daddy's name? Instead of doing that, like taking some real ownership and accountability for where the hell you are at this point in time in your career, you of course are going to lash out because that's what insecure fucking babies do and the wrestling business, by God, is full of them. And then you get, of course, the fucking flock responds, it's Alexa Bliss. Gee, I wonder what dumb shit she tweeted. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of this tier thing either. Love you, Nat. Oh, shut up. Like of all the things to bitch and mo moan and whine about, this is it? Liv Morgan, this is almost as bad as Ryan Satin's tier list. A tee -hee. And Peyton Royce says, seriously? And then you got frickin' Zack Ryder sitting there and say, what type of asshole list is this? You mad because your chick isn't on the list? Well, maybe your chick should be better and she could get on the damn list. Like, there are so many more important things to worry about. And you would think, if this is your chosen profession, your chosen path, 
And God knows for the vast majority of people in wrestling today, it has to be some type of dream that they've had because we don't get the biggest and brightest talents to come into professional wrestling anymore because nobody wants to do this crap because everybody's out there killing themselves for real. All the while the sport looks, the form of entertainment looks faker than ever and you're in front of fewer and fewer eyeballs in this country all the damn time. But this is what we get. And you get a bunch of butthurt, butthurt, overly sensitive marks that buy into way too much of their own bullshit. And when you see stuff like this and you see some of the responses from them, you completely and totally understand why they're not bigger stars. You completely and totally understand why the WWE may not feature them more. You completely and totally understand why they've been with the company for a decade, maybe more, and everybody thinks they're the drizzling shit. See Natalia Neidhart. I mean, this is no different than what you'll see in the real world. You get this all the time. You have people that are at higher levels than you, but they can't hold a candle to what you do and what you can achieve and your actual job skills. Like they're there because of positioning due to networking or due to nepotism or due to any number of variety of factors. They have a degree and you don't, you know, et cetera. And the company puts a value on them that says they're more important than you. You can either whine and bitch and piss and moan about how unfair it is, or you can sit there and figure out what do I need to do to be better? What do I need to do to change the perceptions about me? What do I need to do to stop making excuses, start taking ownership, accountability, and responsibility, and do something about it? If this bothers you, number one, you're an idiot. Number two, find something bigger and more significant to whine about. Number three, most importantly of all, if you're one of these wrestlers that was getting outraged about it, maybe take a step back, let your guard down a little bit. I promise you, it's not that bad to get criticism. Sometimes it's healthy. It provides balance to the force. It gives you a reason to get better, to find your true self, to achieve your true best. Take a step back. And think about what they're saying based off of where they put you. And say to yourself instead of, wah, 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 wah. Sit there and say, you know what? They're right. Let me find out why they're right. And let me make sure that this never happens again. Biggest bunch of fucking crybabies in the damn world. And as big of babies as you guys are as wrestling fans, and you all are, don't ever let anybody tell you that you're the biggest crybabies out there. No way, not even close. Because it seems like once you jump across the threshold and go from being a mark outside of the business to a mark in the business, your levels of personal confidence and self-esteem drop 90 to 95% just like that. And that's not something new. If anything, it's just gotten worse and more prevalent and more evident in time. Of all the damn things that people bitch about. And you don't like it, do something about it. Be better. And leave it to idiots in wrestling as everything that they do drives more and more eyeballs away from the product, specifically in this country, to instead of encouraging something that's fun, that actually drives engagement, that gets conversation going, that gets people to talk about you, leave it to people in wrestling to sit there and try to shun that and be opposed to that. Like, that's the level of intelligence we're dealing with here.